So on this Reformation Sunday, grace, mercy, and peace belong to you. They are free gifts from the one who was and is and is to come. Amen. When we last met, when we began these four weeks of reflection on our response to the generosity of God, leading up to bringing our 2017 pledges to the altar on Gratitude Sunday, we learned that to have faith is to live the faith, and to live the faith is to practice living in gratitude. Now, living in an attitude of gratitude for what God has done is living in what the Navajo Indian tribes, the American Southwest, called living in the blessing way. Or that sacred, centered balance of receiving from God and giving back to the sustainability of God's ongoing creation. Most of us would call such a state of being counting your blessings. To use the words of an old 19th century hymn, which we're going to sing shortly, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings and name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. The old hymn reminds us that in challenging times of our lives, when we feel overwhelmed, we can regain hope and live confidently when we count our blessings from God. I know in my own life, I have found that when I'm at my lowest or most uncertain, those are the times that God seems to have blessed me the most. Those times when there's nothing left to do but simply trust in the promises of God. God whose presence always seems clear in the rear view mirror. So what about you? In a few minutes, I'm going to come around with the microphone. Yes, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and ask you to share a personal moment of gratitude, a time when God has blessed you and made a difference for you and in your life. So be thinking of what you might share from that closet of your soul. For your sharing might inspire someone else. Are you living in the blessing way? Do you count your blessings? Or do you count your problems? What we count, the psychologists say, we increase. When we spend time counting our problems, it seems as if we always have more problems to count. Ever notice that? Everyone knows people who were filled with complaints about their lives, the lives of those around them, and the conditions and general state of the world. When we ask people like that how they are, they always seem to have more to complain about. But conversely, when we ask people who pay attention to the blessings in their lives, it's easy to notice how they always seem to have more blessings to share. The gratitude path leads to generosity in our personal lives and also in our assembly, in our congregations. When we count our many blessings and give time, talent, and treasure back to God, simply to say, thank you. In today's reading from the sixth chapter of Luke, Jesus uses the image of a bag being filled with grain. When a person went to the market, to buy grain for bread back in the day, they would take a cloth bag to be filled, and grain would be poured into the bag until it seemed like it was full. But then the buyer would shake it and press it and tamp it down in order to get as much as possible into the bag. Jesus used this image to show that when we open up our hearts and lives and give time and talent and treasure to God, 
God responds by filling our lives full to overflowing. Overflowing with blessings, joy, and peace. The truth about life is that when we open our hands and give generously to God, then we are in the open-handed position to receive blessings from God. But on the other hand, if we live with our fists tightly closed and our arms protective, keeping our resources only for ourselves, we close ourselves off from receiving the blessings of God the blessings that God wants to put in our hands. So life, life is a circle, a circle of receiving and giving. We receive gifts from God, we give them back to God and to others, and we receive gifts again and we give them back again. It's this constant exchange. Life is cyclical. If we receive gifts from God and keep them only for ourselves, my friends, we die spiritually. It's only when we receive and give, receive and give, that the cycle of life brings meaning and joy. There was this 12th century mystic, a French monk, monk pardon me, named Bernard of Clairvaux. He used a different form of imagery. He talked about a canal and a reservoir to illustrate what Jesus was saying. The man who is wise will see his life as more like a reservoir than a canal, Bernard said. The canal simultaneously pours out what it receives, or it's often stagnant. Think of the old canals in Ohio and Pennsylvania. The reservoir retains the water until it is filled, then discharges the overflow without loss to itself. Picture a glass, and you keep pouring in the blessings, and they start flowing over, unrestricted. The glass is still full, but yet there are blessings to share. Today, Bernard said, there are many in the church who act like canals. The reservoirs are far too rare. And you too, this is still Bernard speaking, must learn to await this fullness before pouring out your gifts. Otherwise, you are trying to outgive God, and that is impossible. Today, we might use the analogy of saying you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't pour from an empty cup. And you are the cup. In another setting in the first century, there was a famine in Jerusalem. And many followers of Jesus were in dire need for food. The Apostle Paul notified all of his churches about this need and made arrangements to travel to every one of them to receive gifts for the needs of their fellow Christians in Jerusalem. Paul said this to the Corinthians. What I mean is this, the one who sows a small number of seeds will also reap a small crop. And the one who sows a generous amount of seeds will also reap a generous crop. The point for the Corinthians was obvious. If, only, if, if they only gave a small amount for the offering for the poor in Jerusalem, they would experience a small amount of joy and satisfaction from their gift. But if they gave a generous and bountiful amount, they would reap a bountiful harvest, a harvest of joy and satisfaction. Both Jesus and Paul say the same thing. They teach that when we give generously, we receive bountifully. And when we fail to give generously according to our means, we receive little fulfillment or satisfaction in our lives. Hopefully these examples show why the traditional church notion of stewardship is a spiritual growth matter and not an economic investment matter. It's not about bills to pay and budgets to balance. 
when we don't invest in God's work so that we, pardon me, I'm getting a little tongue-tied today. When we invest in God's work in order to get a better return on our investment or balance the books, if that's our attitude, we're simply feeding our greed and focusing on ourselves and giving to God so that we will ultimately get more in return. It's like invest, investing in the stock market. When we give to God as we are able, and from a heart filled with gratitude and thanksgiving, that is when we experience the true love of God from whom all blessings flow. For each blessing, for each gift bestowed and received, we are called to give as we have been given to. An example comes to mind from another gospel from Matthew. Remember the story of the rich man who comes to church and makes a big show of emptying his wallet on the altar, and then the poor widow, who only has two pennies to her name, comes and lays the two pennies on the altar. And Jesus said, which one gave from a spirit of generosity and according to her means? Obviously, it was the widow. Those two pennies meant more to her than the, the monarch's fat wallet. Now, what I'd like to do with some assistance from the poetry of someone I really admire, Joyce Rupp, I'd like us to share together how we can count our blessings. You'll see on the screen a response as I go through the blessings and help you recognize some of the blessings in your life. At the end of each one, I want to ask you to respond according to what's on the screen. So let's just try it. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. You have received mercy, kindness, and unconditional love from our God. The gift if, I have received, I will give as a gift. You have many physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual abilities that can be used to better the lives of others. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. This is an important one. You have people in your life who have believed in you and you did not believe in yourself. People who stood by you in difficult times. The, the gift I have received, I will give as a gift. You have inner strength, the grace of conversion, the gift of hope, and the desire for good. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. You have food on your table, clothes in your closet and a roof over your head. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. You have access to medical care, good education, music and the arts, and numerous forms of communication. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. You have religious freedom, the power of free speech, and various and sundry structures to promote justice and to protect our fellow men. The gift, the gift I have received, I will give as a gift. You have a marvelous planet on which to live. I will give as a gift. And you have the opportunity for spiritual renewal and maturity in your relationship with the divine. The gift I have received, I will give as a gift. Now in just a moment, we're going to stand and sing that hymn, that old hymn, Counts Your Blessings. But before we do, I invite you to take a moment in an attitude of prayer, silent prayer, and meditation 
and ask for God to show you how you might apply your gifts to those on our prayer list, those on our prayer list, those who need your presence. And after a few moments of silence, the music will call us from prayer. And when we are finished praising God with song, I want to come among you, the microphone, and ask you to share one blessing, one, one moment of gratitude from your life, one time when you have experienced the gift of God. Let us be in prayer. <clears throat>